Hello, welcome back to the YAWL tutorials. Um, you remember that we had three perspectives in workflows, namely the control flow, the data and the resources. In the last video we talked about editing the control flow and we did that with the YAWL editor. And in this video we'll talk about data, entering information about data for every task in our control flow. And the next video will then be on the resources. So let's start where we left off in the last tutorial. Uh, if you don't have the specification of the last tutorial, you can go back to that tutorial and find it in the supplementary material. You will find a .yaw file in there that you can then load if you want to start from there. I have already opened up the YAWL editor now. Remember that you need a running YAWL engine and a resource service and that the YAWL editor must be connected to it. So let's go and look at the specification we did the last time. So we had four tasks here. One is submit leave request then approve leave request, note approval and note rejection. So we'll start off by telling the editor what are the data we are going to use with submit leave request. So for that we click on this task symbol here and then on the left hand side you can see that the editor has opened several sub-panels here from the properties of the specification to the net, the task and last but not least the decomposition. And this is a, some kind of hierarchy. So in order to enter the data necessary for this task, what we can do is we can directly go to the decomposition now and we find one line here about data variables. So if we click on that, there is a window opening now and we can enter net variables in the upper half and decomposition variables in the lower half. We can think of the net variables of being global variables in this net and decomposition variables being local to the decomposition we are currently editing. And the decomposition we are editing is called submit leave request, so it belongs to that task. So what kind of data do we need here? Um, let's say we want to have the first name and the last name of the applicant. So we go here on the plus sign and we say the name of the variable. So I will call it first name. And you cannot see it here, but note that I did an underscore here because these are XML elements and we will cover in a later video how you can edit variables containing blanks, variable names or labels containing blanks. But for the time being, let's just use um, underscore here. So first name is the name of the variable and then the second column here is the type. So um, String is the default type and that's fine for this variable. We have a name and then the scope is local within this net. That's fine as well. The next variable we need is the last name. So I type in last underscore name and we want to have a start and an end date. So I will add another variable start date. And this time I will choose the data type date. So I type in a D here and then I cho choose this date type and the same for end date. And the last variable here is the destination.
Oh, let's put in another one for the reason. So these are the variables we will use in this uh, specification and we will use it in this decomposition. So in order to use them in the decomposition, we have to define something that is called a mapping of the variables from the net to the decomposition. And this can be done manually, but for the time being, we will do that completely automatically by the editor. So what we do is just, we select the first variable and then we drag it into the decomposition. And then we do this with all the other variables. So last name, start date, end date, destination and reason. Uh, so now we have to think about the scope of the variables in the decomposition and in the net these variables were local variables but in the decomposition we have three different choices for variable scopes. One is input output. This is the default selection meaning that the variable has already a value in the net, we read its value, we edit it in the net, and then we output it back to another net variable. The second scope is input only. Input only means that it has already a value in the net, it is input into the decomposition, and then it is read only, we cannot change its value. And then we have the third option is output. So this means we don't have a value yet, and we are just going to create a value here in the decomposition and then this will be output to the net. And it is this third option we will use here for our first task because all of the vari variables are uninitialized for the moment. So I will choose output here and I'll do the same for all the other variables. And then I can click apply and OK. So we are done for the first task. And the second task, approve leave. So we are going to imagine that now someone, maybe the superior of the applicant is now approving or rejecting the application for leave. And we need all of the variables that we have seen in the last task as input variables now. So let's do that. So we open again the data for this decomposition and then we just drag and drop all of the variables here. First name, last name, start date, end date, destination and reason. And we give all these variables the scope input. Now we will have to add two more variables. One is the variable that is about approving or rejecting this application. And we will call this one approve leave. So we will add another net variable here first call it approve underscore leave and this time is a boolean variable and the last variable is the rejection reason and this is a string and again, we have to pull these variables down here. And the scope now, because it's the first time they are being used in this specification, is output. So, very well. The next thing we will do is we will edit this task node approval. So in case it is approved, and we will come back to this XOR branching here uh, later, 
when it is approved, we want to see everything that has been entered in the submit leave request, including the approval check mark. So again, it's the same thing. We just open the data variables dialog and we just enter first name, last name, start date, end date, destination, reason, and approve leave. And because it's just a notification, we are going to set the input scope for all of these variables. And note rejection is very similar. We just enter all of the variables we have here. And we will also enter the rejection reason and they are all of scope input. So now we have entered all of the data. The only thing that's missing now is that we need something to tell the system here for this X or split, which way to go. And which way to go is really dependent on what is the value of the variable approve leave. We have approve leave request selected and we go to split predicates. And now the system shows us note approval and note rejection. And currently note approval is selected and you can see the arrow that goes there is green. And if we select the second option, the arrow is green there. So what condition do we need for note approval? Well, true means it's always true, so that's not correct. So we want to edit that and we click the three dots here. And now we have the possibility to generate an expression of a variable. And we are lucky because approve leave is already selected here. So what we do is we just press these two circles here. And then we get an expression that gives us the value of the variable approve leave. We will cover the subject of these expressions in a later video. For the time being, all we do now is we check if the value of this approve leave variable is true. And we put true inside hyphens. And then we can see the expression is syntactically correct and we press OK. So that's all that we need now. And we just have to check if our specification is valid. So we validate it here. No problems reported. And then we save it here. And it's done. So now we have entered the data for our little specification. And in the next video, I'll show you how to enter the resources that are going to work with this. See you then.